Hello and welcome to the webinar of the month. Today we're going to be talking about Instagram marketing tips for design and remodeling companies that work. So the topics that we're going to talk about, we're going to talk about the importance of Instagram marketing, the fundamentals of Instagram marketing to develop a plan, and then top trends and tips of, on Instagram marketing and some analytics on the Instagram post as well. Okay. So this is the second most accessed network. Uh, behind, as you would know, Facebook. So with over 1 billion active monthly users and 500 million daily Instagram stores, you can imagine that this is a platform that gets a lot of interest from a lot of people. And this is one of the top platforms for design and remodeling companies. This one also Facebook and Pinterest. These are the three top platforms. TikTok is growing. It's not where Instagram is right now for designers and remodelers. That's why we're going to talk about that today. So the importance of Instagram marketing, first of all, is the visual nature of the platform. As you know, the imagery is what actually draws people in. And that is a great way to showcase what you have as a designer or a remodeling company. It's always it's a centered around storytelling and really with the stories that has been really that has really amplified that stories and reels have really amplified storytelling in terms of Instagram marketing. The audience potential, I just talked about that, the 500 million users per day. I mean, it's just uh, remarkable at, at, at just the reach you can get brand engagement. A lot of brands in the design space recognize, will look at your Instagram feed. Like if you're looking at brand partnerships, they're going to look at social media, website and all. And so Instagram is one of those social media platforms that they will look at. So brand engagement happens a lot on this platform and feedback and insights just in terms of how you engage your customers. Feedback in terms of engagement. This is one of the best platforms over Facebook and Twitter in terms of engagement. So that's why we're we're highlighting this platform today. We want to start first, you want to have a business account. There may be questions about just having a personal account. That's great, but you want to have a business account because you have access to more features in terms of insights, ads, shopping. So Instagram shopping is great for designers to showcase a lot of the products that they have in their design. So you can be an affiliate for a lot of these as well. And so, but to do that, you have to have a business account, separate the messaging. And in terms of call to action, you have more options with the contact information and the call to action when you have a business account. Okay. You want to optimize your profile. This is one of the first things we, when we take on a client, we ask, we ask, have they optimized their their profile, their social media profiles. A lot of the times they think they have, but they really have. not So you want to make sure to fill out all of the information in your profile. So when you have, you have 150 characters on your bio, use as much of that as you can. Say what you do, convey what your brand personality is and tell people why they should follow your account over others and what type of information you're going to provide and use that 150 characters as best as you can. You have 30 characters for this. Uh, your username also have 30 characters for that. You want to have a link to your website because a lot of the times you can't have links in the post, but you can always say link in my bio. And so that's where you can have the link to your website and you can change this out as often as you like. The category, what category are you in? The contact information, how do they find you? How do they find out who you are, what you do and all that stuff. And then the call action button, give Instagrammers a way to interact with you directly on your profile. So use all of this information, make sure your bio is complete as possible, okay? Choose the right profile photo. So make sure that your photo is professional. It represents your brand correctly and it's at the proper dimensions as well. If you just have a square photo, you may want to widen it out a little so you can see in this because you're going to have a circle. Now we're going to start about the trends. First, you want to 
define a distinct marketing strategy. So to be successful, you want to have a set purpose and goals and justify that and and how you want to accomplish that on this platform. So don't just hop on and say, I'm going to be on the platform, but why are you on the platform? What are you looking to accomplish? These are just some strategies that you can look at, okay? Using your Instagram feed to post and sell your products to your customers, leveraging Instagram to share portfolio content, your projects, building brand awareness, sharing user-generated content, that increases your followers and that other real people can see what is your product or service and why they should look at what you have to offer, okay? Those are just some of the strategies, but there are others. Determine your audience. Now, once you have the goal of why you're on the platform in the first place, next you want to determine who your audience is. Because like we like to say in in the marketing world, if you try to market to everyone, you're actually marketing to no one. So understand your audience and develop strategies that will target them directly. So if you don't have an idea of how to develop your audience, here's some tips here. You want to consider factors like the age, location, gender, income, interests, motivations, and pain points. And then you want to look at, you want to monitor hashtags of other designers, interesting hashtags of related businesses, either designers or manufacturers or companies that your audience is already a follower of that brand to see what are they doing right? What are they posting about? What, what are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? So you can do it better. And so this leads into a, a competitor analysis. So you want to determine your Instagram audience. Once you have that audience determined, now you can start to look at the competitors to see what they're doing right and wrong and what you can amplify and alter and optimize on your own. If you already know who your top competitors are, start by reviewing their Instagram profiles, all right? If you do not know who who they are, search for terms that are related to the industry in your category. It could be sustainability, it could be aging in place. It could be uh, designing for all, what, whatever that may be for your particular audience. Look at those terms to search for those and, and see who pulls up because you want to do a quick audit of their posts to see where they're having the most engagements. What are the hashtags that they're using? And that'll help you develop your own. So once you've audited all of your competitor profiles, now you can develop what is missing. And this right here is just a quick analysis. You can look at this and just by making a list of step one and then building the profiles, building the competitor profiles, uncovering what the strategies are, and then you want to put that in action. So you want to understand what is happening with all of this. So what are they doing right? What are they doing wrong? And you you want to understand that. So when you create your own profile, or even if you already have your own profile, you want to do this anyway, because now you want to look at what are the competitors doing right that you can either optimize and do for yourself, or what are they not missing? Do a gap analysis and see what are the missing links that you're not providing, they're not providing, that you may now be able to provide to increase your own follower count and engagement. Next, you want to develop an editorial calendar. So you want to create a calendar so A, you can save time and have everything where you need it. Because a lot of times I'm I'm asked by designers what to post about, when to post, and we're going to talk about the when at the end. But you want to develop a calendar because that's going to help you organize your thoughts for the next week, for the next month. And After you've done that competitor analysis, you now have some hashtags, you now have topics that you can possibly post about. And you want to create events. You want to look at what's happening for that month. Are there any events happening in the design remodeling industry that you may want to post about? Or are you attending any events that you may want to post about? You could develop that content calendar now so you could pre schedule the post and save yourself time. Uh, Because a lot of the time, what a lot of our designers do is they will use a platform. There's a lot of platforms out there, Hootsuite, Zoho, and 
and others, but you can schedule a lot of the posts. And actually you can do a lot of that within Instagram and Facebook as well. Pre-plan everything for the month and then schedule it out. And then if there's anything happening real time, then they can move it around. But at least you have a plan for the month. And so HubSpot actually has a free calendar. You can head to HubSpot social media content calendar template. And it's a free template that they have that you can get access to. We also have one that we created for 2022 and it has topics around the design and remodeling industry. Just reach out to us, send the email, our email info at Kitchen and Bath Marketing Solutions, and we'll let you have access to that calendar as well. But it just has topic ideas for each of the months in 2022. So you have an idea of what you may want to post about, because like I said, a lot of the times a designers ask me, what do I post about? So we actually develop the content calendar to help you with some topic ideas. But you want to also do that competitor analysis for the competitors in your space that are posting around the same type of things and have the audience, the same type of audience that you want. You want to see what they're posting about, where their engagement level is, so you can tie into that and see what they are doing that you may not be doing. Or if you're starting your your Instagram account now, what you can, what you can actually post about. And like I said, with the gap analysis, you'll see where they're missing the mark where you can add in. Next, you want to have consistency in the brand. Okay, one of the things that drive people crazy is that when they see your website and then they look at social media, it's hard to tell that it's consistent. So you want to be consistent across platforms, whether that's email marketing, whether that's on your website, social media, whether that's print advertising, whatever that is, you want to be consistent throughout all of the posts or uh, throughout all of the profiles. So make sure you have a consistent brand around whatever is happening. This example here, Apartment Therapy, they do a great job across all of their social media platforms and across all of the brands, whether it be on their website, if you're on their email list, because we had looked on on their email. So across, no matter where you see them, their brand consistency, colors, logo is consistent uh, throughout all brands. You want to make sure that you are following that same track ensure that you are being consistent across all platforms and that when somebody sees your post, they already know it's you. Or when they see an email from you, they already know it's you. Or when they look on on your website, it ties into all the other platforms. So you have that consistency and that helps increase followers because now they know any of the posts that you do are going to be of X, Y, Z quality. Is going to be of this type and it's, and they will come to expect that from you over and over and over again. And that's how you build a consistent file. What used to be done in the past that does not work now is buying followers. You do not want to buy followers. That will get you either, either the followers disavowed from your account or in extreme cases, it can also get your account banned. So Instagram, Facebook and other platforms, they now have tweaked their algorithm to look at what are real and fake followers. So make sure all of the followers in your profile are real. Do not buy any because now there are algorithms out there finding which ones are real, which ones are fake and deleting the fake ones. And in extreme cases, your account can get banned. These are some ways that you can get real followers, the right one. Make sure that your name, username is searchable, recognizable and searchable. Like I said from the start, fill out your profile completely, recognizable hashtags in there that are recognized in your area of expertise, whether that be sustainability, agent in place, whatever that may be for you, you wanna use those relevant hashtags in your posts You want to have those keywords in the description in your profile so they're easy to search, easy to find. And so that's how it can get found. You want to optimize your profile. Like I said, optimize your profile, optimize your post. If you have a new profile, so if you're watching this or if you're in this webinar right now and you haven't done Instagram before and this is new for you, before you really start to engage and go after followers, make sure you have 15 high quality posts 
before you really start to engage with people. Because if you start the account and it's empty and you start to look at other posts, follow other posts, engage on other posts, what will happen is that if they come back to your Instagram profile and it's empty, they may not follow you because they don't see anything relevant for them. Make sure you have 15 high quality posts, at least, that you can relate to your audience with the followers that you're trying to uh, create and have them follow you. You have posts that are relevant for them. So when they come to your account, when they come to your profile, they see it. And they say, OK, this is interesting to me. I want to actually follow what they're doing as well. And then you want to you want to be social. Remember, Instagram is a social media platform. So you want to follow other accounts. You want to look at other accounts. You want to comment on other accounts, because if you do that for others, if they come back to your profile and see your post, they may likely and will most likely do that for you. Don't just post, post, post and not engage on other profiles because you're not being social. Remember, this is a social media platform and you want to be social. And in turn, you'll get that happening to you as well. So now, how do you convert these followers into leads? Once you have a follower account, now you want to start to use strategies that will convert them into paying clients. All right. There are a number of ways. We have a few here. Start with promotions. You could do discounts that uh, engage your audience and have them interested. You could do contests. That's a great way to get uh, the followers to engage with you. If your audience is of the millennial type, over 81% like companies that are active in charities, some type of charity, whatever charities that you like or are active with, you may want to have a, a promotion or a post on that if your audience is of the millennial category, because they're highly into what's happening. How active are you with charities? Also, you can have teasers. You can have live launches doing stories and doing highlights of that. Great way to get followers and have them engaged. Omni-channel promotion. So that's talking about other platforms, whether that be other social media platforms, your website, email newsletter. You want to have a way for them to share and follow you on those other platforms. So you want to have buttons that they can click and then share and follow you on their Instagram account. Content dynamics. So here, what we're looking at is the visual media. You want to ensure that visually you're getting across to your audience what represents your brand. And Instagram is a visual platform like we had talked about at the start. Tips here. You can have behind the scene post. Give your followers a look at your audience, a look at your storefront or processes. Give them a look behind the scenes because that is what differentiates you from other designers. Give quotes on any text-based images. So any images that, that are just only just the image, make sure it's visually appealing and have some text in there or something that livens it up because video is by far where it's at. And we're going to talk you know, a little bit about video here. But if you just have an image, you want to somehow liven it up and have it tie into your brand as well. Having your logo on there, having some type of text or in the description really describing what that's about. OK, user generated content. As your audience begins to engage with you, start to use some of the information that they provide you in your post, because that shows you're listening. And the more you use user generated content, the more they'll listen, the more they'll comment, the more they'll engage and the more likely they are to buy from you at that point, too. Instructional posts, how to is one of the best type of posts we've seen work. And if you could tie that into video, that's to a whole nother level. If you can teach in your post, that's a great way for you to get across uh, to your audience, what you're trying to do. Okay. So teach about uh, how to make the room larger, how to bring light into a space, whatever it is you do in your own design practice, do some teachable post on that and video talk about that. If you could tie in the teachable aspect with the video aspect, now you really get the, the power account and the engagement to grow. Cause 
Video is really where it's at in uh, creating stories, 60 seconds or less, or if you have IGTV, if you could create videos around that and how to post and how to video around that, explaining your process, how to do X, Y, Z. Now you're starting to get the engagement of, of a lot of the designers that we work with. We find the most engagement with the designers that do reels, stories, and video type posts because they get the most engagement from their audience. And so videos, stories, and reels are the way to go. Hashtags. Hashtags are a great way for you to also increase visibility. Now, you could use up to 30 hashtags, but we only recommend it between three and five because we've seen over the last year, the Instagram algorithm is really answering and showing that you want to do only about three to five posts. Okay, so that's where you want to aim at. That's why I talked earlier about analyzing the competition, because they're going to give you hints into if, as you look at their posts and the ones that have the most engagement, you'll see hashtags that they're using and the ones that really work well and the ones that do not. That's you want to make note of that as we had in that chart so you can see which hashtags you want to use for, for your own post that will work well with your audience. Use hashtags that are relevant, niche specific, and do not encourage a follow or link swap because that's really not encouraged. Instagram ads. So this is one of the areas that we're going to talk a lot about next month. Next month, we're going to have a webinar just on Facebook ads, and a lot of it ties directly into Instagram ads as well. So on ads, great way for you to get your audience and to have them buy from you by targeting them directly. But on the ads, you want to target them by location, by the demographics, their interests and behaviors. So you can get a lot of that from the back end, but you want to know who your audience is. Remember, I talked earlier on, know your audience. This is why, because once you know your detailed audience if you and you've analyzed your audience, age, interest, behavior. Now you can put that information in here and create an audience that you can do ads to that goes directly into their feed. This is, there's a lot behind ads and I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here because like I said, next month, August 31st is going to be all about Facebook ads, do's and don'ts. We're going to talk about how to create the ads, how to be effective in the ads. And a lot of the information we talk about the Facebook ads apply directly to Instagram ads too, because you can do, when you do a Facebook ad, it automatically clicks to do an Instagram ad. So everything I, I talk about next month is relevant for Instagram ads as well. I mean, we looked at the analytics and of the over 250,000 posts we've seen in over 11 industries, we found that the best time to post generally. Now, I'm saying all this because you want to look at your own Instagram feed as you begin to post to look at. That's why you want to have the business account to look at the analytics to see when is the best time for you that your audience is engaging with your post. But generally, from what we've seen off of what we've analyzed for professional services in the design realm is Tuesday, Wednesday and Friday. 9 or 10 a.m. your time, whether that be Central, Eastern, or Pacific, whatever in your time zone. That's what we've seen the best time to post for the design industry. You'll see some of the other industries here, but in the design realm, you want to look at professional services. And like I said, what we've seen Tuesday, Wednesday, Friday, 9 to 10. But again, this is general. You want to look as you develop your own post, look at your own analytics to see what is the best time for you to post and when you develop your content calendar. Now you can schedule the post to go live at the time that is most relevant for your audience when they engage the most. We also saw from the Instagram analytics, which you need to have on the business side. Like I said, you want to make sure you have a bit a business profile, not personal profile, because you can see the analytics is that the popularity of the platform is growing and the analytics is important for you to see your own information, what is happening, what's not happening, what you need to optimize, what you need to improve. on, And all this information here is from HubSpot. And then these are just some of the analytics tools. 
if you do not use Instagram analytics or Facebook analytics, you can use any of these tools. But to start, I would say Instagram actually has good analytical tools in their own platform that you could use. But if you're really going to look to grow your audience and show the engagement, you can look at these other tools as well. Feel free to reach out to us. We're here to help. Next month, Wednesday, August the 31st, we'll be talking about Facebook ads because you do your Instagram ads the same way as you do the Facebook ads. Have a great rest of your week and we hope to see you all next month at our webinar of the month. All right. Have a good day.